Inhale. Take in as much air as you can. The story should last about as long as you can hold your breath, and then just a little bit longer. So just listen as fast as you can. A friend of mine, when he was 13 years old, he heard about pegging. This is when a guy gets banged up the butt with a dildo. Stimulate the prostate gland hard enough, and the rumor is, you can have explosive hands-free orgasms. At that age, this friend's a little sex maniac. He's always jonesing for a better way to get his rocks off. He goes out and buy a carrot and some petroleum jelly to conduct a little private research. Then he pictures how it's going to look at the supermarket checkout counter, the lonely carrot and petroleum jelly just rolling down the conveyor belt towards the grocery store cashier. All the shoppers waiting in line, watching. Everyone seeing the big evening he had planned. So my friend, he buys milk and eggs and sugar and a carrot. All the ingredients for a carrot cake. And Vaseline. Like he's going to go home and stick a carrot up his butt. At home, he whittles the carrot into a blunt tool. He slathers it with grease and grinds his ass down on it. Then, nothing. No orgasm. Nothing happens. Except it hurts. Then, this kid. His mom yells at supper time. She says to come down. Right now. He works the carrot out and stashes the slippery, filthy thing and the dirty clothes under his bed. After dinner, he goes to find the carrot. And it's gone. All his dirty clothes while he ate his dinner. His mom grabbed them all to do laundry. No way could she not find the carrot, carefully shaped with the paring knife from her kitchen, still all shiny with lube and stinky. This friend of mine, he waits months under a black cloud, waiting for his folks to confront him. And they never do. Ever. Even now that he's grown up, that invisible carrot hangs over every Christmas dinner, every birthday party, every Easter egg hunt with his kids, his parents' grandkids. That ghost carrot is hovering over all of them. That's something too awful to name. People in France have a phrase, staircase wit. In French, esprit de l'escalier. Can't say that. It means the moment when you find the answer. But it's too late. Say you're at a party, and someone insults you. You have to say something. So under pressure, with everybody watching, you say something lame. But the moment you leave the party, as you start down the stairway, then... Magic. You come up with the perfect thing you should have said. The perfect crippling put-down. That's the spirit of the stairway. The trouble is, even the French don't have for a phrase for the stupid things you actually do say under pressure. Those stupid... Desperate things you actually think or do. Some deeds are too low to even get a name. Too low to even get talked about. Looking back, kid psych experts, school counselors, now say that the most of the last peak in teen suicide was kids trying to choke when they beat off. Their folks would find them, that towel twisted around their kid's neck, the towel tied to the rod in their bedroom closet, the kid dead, dead sperm everywhere. Of course the folks cleaned up. They put some pants on the kid. They made it look... better. Intentional, at least. The regular kind of sad teen suicide. Another friend of mine, a kid from school, his older brother in the Navy, said that how guys in the Middle East jack off different than we do here. This brother was stationed in some camel country where the public market sells what could be fancy letter openers. Each fancy tool is just a thin rod of polished brass or silver, maybe as long as your hand, with a big tip at one end, Either a big metal ball, or some kind of fancy carved handle that you see on a sword. This Navy brother says how Arab guys get their dick hard, and then insert this metal rod inside the whole length of their boner. They jack off with the rod inside, and it makes getting off so much better, more intense. It's this big brother who travels around the world, sending back French phrases, Russian phrases, helpful jack-off tips. After this, the little brother one day, he doesn't show up for school. That night, he calls to ask if I'll pick up his homework for the next couple of weeks, because he's in the hospital. He's got to share a room with old people getting their guts worked on. He says how they all have to share the same television. All he's got for privacy is a curtain. His folks don't come and visit. On the phone, he says how right now his folks could just kill his big brother in the Navy. On the phone, the kid says how, the day before he was just a little stoned. At home in his bedroom, he flopped onto the bed. He was lighting a candle and flipping through some old porno magazines, getting ready to beat off. This is after he's heard from his Navy brother, that helpful hint about how Arabs beat off. The kid looks around for something that might do the job. A ballpoint pen's too big. 
A pencil's too big and rough. But drip down the side of a candle, there's a thin, smooth ridge of wax that just might work. With the tip of one finger, this kid snaps the long ridge of wax off the candle. He rolls it smooth between the palms of his hands, long and smooth and thin. Stoned and horny, he slips it down inside, deeper and deeper into the piss slit of his boner. With a good hank of the wax still poking out of the top, he gets to work. Even now, he says, those Arab guys are pretty damn smart. They've totally reinvented jacking off. Flat back in his bed, things are getting so good, this kid can't keep track of the wax. He's one good squeeze from shooting his wad when the wax isn't sticking out anymore. The thin wax rod, it's slipped inside. All the way inside. So deep inside, he can't even feel the lump of it inside his piss tube. From downstairs, his mom shouts, It's supper time. She says to come down, right now. This wax kid and the carrot kid are different people. But we all live pretty much the same life. It's after dinner when the kid's guts start to hurt. It's wax, so he figured it would just melt inside him and he'd pee it out. Now his back hurts, his kidneys. He can't stand straight. This kid talking on the phone from his hospital bed. In the background you can hear the bells ding, people screaming. Game shows. The x-ray showed the truth. Something long and thin, bent double inside his bladder. This long, thin V inside him. It's collecting all the minerals in his piss. It's getting bigger and rougher, coated with the crystals of calcium. It's bumping around, ripping up the soft lining of his bladder, blocking his piss from getting out. His kidneys are backed up. What little that leaks out of his dick is red with blood. This kid and his friends, his whole family, them looking at the black extra with the doctor and the nurses standing there, the big V of wax glowing white for everybody to see. He has to tell the truth, the way Arabs get off. What his big brother told him from the Navy. On the phone right now, he starts to cry. They paid for the bladder operation with his college fund. One stupid mistake, and now he'll never be a lawyer. Sticking stuff inside yourself, sticking yourself inside stuff, a candle in your dick, or your head in a noose. We all knew it was going to be big trouble. What got me in trouble? I called it pearl diving. This meant whacking off underwater sitting on the bottom of the deep end in my parents' swimming pool. With one deep breath, I'd kick my way to the bottom and slip off my swim trunks, and I'd sit there for two, three, four minutes. Just from jacking off, I had a huge lung capacity. If I had the house to myself, I'd do this all afternoon. After I'd finally pump out my stuff, my sperm, it would just hang there in big, fat, milky gobs. After that was more diving, to catch it all, to collect it, and wipe each handful in a towel. That's why it was called pearl diving. Even with chlorine, there was my sister to worry about. Poor Christ almighty, my mom. That used to be my worst fear in the world, my teenage virgin sister, thinking she's just getting fat, then giving birth to a two-headed retard baby, both heads looking just like me. Me, the father, and the uncle. In the end, it's never what you worry about that gets you. The best part of pearl diving was the inlet port for the swimming pool filter and the circulation pump. The best part was getting naked and sitting on it. As the French would say, who doesn't like getting their butt sucked? Still, one minute you're just a kid getting off, and the next minute, you'll never be a lawyer. One minute, I'm settling in on the pool bottom, and the sky is wavy, light blue through eight feet of water above my head. The world is silent except for the heartbeat in my ears. My yellow pinstripe swim trunks are looped around my neck for safekeeping, just in case a friend, a neighbor, or anybody shows up and asks why I skipped football practice. The steady suck of the pool inlet hole is lapping at me, and I'm grinding my skinny white ass around on that feeling. One minute I've got enough air and my dick's in my hand. My folks are gone at their work and my sister's got ballet. Nobody's supposed to be home for hours. My hand brings me right to getting off, and I stop. I swim up to catch another big breath. I dive down and settle at the bottom. I do this again and again. This must be why girls want to sit on your face. The suction is like taking a dump that never ends. My dick hard and getting my butt eaten out, I do not need air. My heart beat in my ears, I stay under until bright stars of light warming around my eyes. My legs straight out, the back of each knee rubbed raw against the concrete bottom, my toes are turning blue, my toes and fingers wrinkled from being so long in the water. 
And then I let it happen. The big white gob starts spouting. The pearls. It's then I need some air. But when I go to kick off against the bottom, I can't. I can't get my feet under me. My ass is stuck. Emergency paramedics will tell you that every year about 150 people get stuck this way. Sucked by a circulation pump. Getting your long hair caught, or your ass, and you're going to drown. Every year, tons of people do. Most of them in Florida. People just don't talk about it. Not even the French people talk about everything. Getting one knee up, getting one foot tucked under me. I get to half standing when I feel the tug against my butt. Getting my other foot under me, I kick off against the bottom. I'm kicking free, not touching the concrete, but not getting to the air either. Still kicking water, thrashing with both arms. I may be halfway to the surface, but not going higher. The heartbeat inside my head is getting loud and fast. The bright sparks of light crossing and crisscrossing my eyes. I turn and look back, but it doesn't make sense. This thick rope, some kind of snake, blue-white, braided with veins, has come up out of the pool drain, and it's holding onto my butt. Some of the veins are leaking blood, red blood that looks black underwater and drifts away from little rifts in the pale skin of the snake. The blood trails away, disappearing in the water, and inside the snake's thin blue-white skin, you can see the lumps of some half-digested meal. That's the only way this makes sense. Some horrible sea monster, a sea serpent, something that's never seen the light of day. It's been hiding in the dark bottom of the pool drain, waiting to eat me. So I kick at it at the slippery, rubbery, knotted skin and the veins of it, and the more of it seems to pull out of the pool drain. It's maybe as long as my leg in hell, but still holding tight around my butthole. With another kick, I'm an inch closer to getting another breath, still feeling that snake tug on my ass. I'm an inch closer to my escape. Knotted inside the snake, you can see corn and peanuts. You can see a long, bright, orange ball. It's the kind of horse pill vitamin my dad makes me take to help put on weight, to get a football scholarship, with extra iron and omega-3 fatty acids. It's seeing that vitamin pill that saves my life. It's not a snake. It's my large intestine. My colon pulled out of me. What doctors call prolapsed. It's my gut sucked into the drain. Paramedics will tell you a swimming pool pumps out 80 gallons of water every minute. That's about 400 pounds of pressure. The big problem is, we're all connected together inside. Your ass is just the far end of your mouth. If I let go, the pump keeps working, unraveling my insides until it's got my tongue. Imagine taking a 400 pound shit, and you can see how this might turn you inside out. What I can tell you is, your guts don't feel much pain. Not the way your skin feels pain. The stuff you're digesting, the doctors call it fecal matter. Higher up is chyme, pockets of a thin, ruddy mass, studded with corn and peanuts and round green peas. That's all this soup of blood and corn, shit and sperm and peanuts floating around and saying, even my guts are raveling out my ass, me holding onto what's left. Even then, my first want is to somehow get my swimsuit back on. God forbid my folks see my dick. My one hand is holding a fist around my ass as my other snacks my yellow striped swim trunks and pulls them from around my neck. Still, getting into them is impossible. If you want to feel your intestines, go buy a pack of lambskin condoms. Take one out and unroll it. Pack it with peanut butter. Smear it with petroleum jelly and hold it under water. Then try to tear it. Try to tear it in half. It's too tough and rubbery. It's so slimy you can't hold on. A lambskin condom. That's just plain old intestine. You can see what I'm up against. You let go for a second and you're gutted. You swim for the surface for a breath and you're gutted. You don't swim, and you drown. It's a choice between being dead right now, or a minute from now. What my folks will find after work is a big naked fetus, curled in on itself, floating in the cloudy water of their backyard pool, tethered to the bottom by a thick rope of veins and twisted guts. The opposite of a kid hanging himself to death while he jacks off. This is the baby they brought home from the hospital 13 years ago. Here's the kid they hoped would snag a football scholarship and get an MBA. Who care for them in their old age? Here's all their hopes and dreams, floating there, naked and dead, all around in big milky pearls of wasted sperm. Either that, or my folks will find me wrapped in a bloody towel, collapsed halfway from the pool to the kitchen telephone, the ragged torn scrap of my guts still hanging out the leg of my yellow striped swim trunks. What even the French won't talk about. That big brother in the Navy, he taught us one other good phrase, a Russian phrase. The way we say, I need that like I need a hole in my head. The Russian people say, 
I need that like I need teeth in my asshole. Mene et donado, kakzubi vidvadnis. These stories about how animals get caught in a trap will chew off their leg. Well, any coyote will tell you a couple of bites beats the hell out of being dead. Hell, even if you're Russian, someday you just might want those teeth. Otherwise, what you have to do is, you have to twist around. You hook one elbow behind your knee and you pull that leg up to your face. You bite and you snap at your own ass. You run out of air and you will chew through anything to get through that next breath. It's not something you want to tell a girl on the first date. Not if you expect a kiss goodnight. If I told you how it tasted, you would never, ever again eat calamari. It's hard to say what my parents were more disgusted by, how I got into trouble, or how I saved myself. After the hospital, my mom said, You didn't know what you were doing, honey. You were in shock. She learned how to cook poached eggs. All those people grossed out or feeling sorry for me. I need that like I need teeth in my asshole. Nowadays, people always tell me I look too skinny. People at dinner parties get all quiet and pissed off when I don't eat the pot roast they cooked. Pot roast kills me. Baked ham, anything that hangs around inside my guts longer than a couple of hours, it still comes out food. Home cooked lima beans or chunk like tuna fish, I'll stand up and find it still sitting there in the toilet. After you have a radical bowel resectioning, you don't digest meat so great. Most people, you have five feet of large intestine. I'm lucky to have my six inches. So I never got a football scholarship. Never got an MBA. Both my friends, the Wax Kid and the Kara Kid, they grew up, got big. But I've never weighed a pound more than I did the day I was 13. Another big problem was my folks paid a lot of good money for that swimming pool. In the end, my dad just told the pool guy it was a dog. The family dog fell in and drowned. The dead body got pulled inside the pump. Even when the pool guy cracked open the filter casing and fished out a rubbery tube, a watery hank of intestine, with a big orange vitamin pill still inside. Even then, my dad just said, That dog was fucking nuts. Even from my upstairs bedroom window, you could hear my dad say, We couldn't trust that dog alone for a second. Then my sister missed her period. Even after they changed the pool water, after they sold the house and we moved to another state, after my sister's abortion, even then, my parents never mentioned it again. Ever. That is our invisible carrot. You. Now you can take a good deep breath. I still have it.